Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm having my second cup of coffee, but I do not have cinnamon in this coffee right now. Not for any reason other than I just forgot to do it this morning. But I am on my game and I do have a lot of good information to give to you here. The first thing that I found was, this is from Michael Arrington who runs um, Arrington XRP Capital. This guy's plugged in and know what, knows what's going on. I've heard from one primary source that central banks are already accumulating Bitcoin. It's not in their interest to publicize it for the same reason China vastly undercounts gold reserves. This convo between uh, below is speculative, but it wouldn't surprise me if exactly this happens. And I don't know where he got this, but it's some kind of conversation. China is going to have an anti-crypto stance for 10 years and on the 11th year, People's Bank of China is going to come out and say they own 15% of all Bitcoin in circulation. LOL. Are there any peeps of Chinese government accumulating at any level whatsoever, regional, local, administrative? And he says, yeah, we've heard quite a few. Now, <clears throat> they said uh, that they're, they're going to have an anti-crypto stance for 10 years. Well, I got in this in 2013, and I can tell you, that China, now this is something, remember, we've, we've talked about this a lot, okay? Remember, China uh, has come out time and time again, not just China, but India and Russia and a lot of these countries. What they've done is like the, the, the Bitcoin and the crypto prices will run up and then they'll come out and they'll announce that they're doing some type of ban and it's always a real gray area. You don't know exactly what they're talking about. Then the prices will plummet. And then the prices will start to go crazy again. And then they'll come out and announce that the, the Rep Republic of China, their, their bank or whatever, is not going to allow any more crypto transactions or whatever. This has happened over and over and over. And it's the pure manipulation. We've called it out. And it's been happening since I was in it in 2013. So you know it was happening. Uh, I guess Bitcoin was created in, in around 2009. And so... But, but importantly here, it says China is going to have an anti-crypto stance for 10 years. Now, if you just go back to 2013, that's, that's six years right there, okay? So um, add another one or two that I wasn't even in the game. You're almost at the 10-year mark. I've always thought that this is how this is going to come up, uh, going to unfold. And it's going to not just, it's not just China that's going to do this. It's going to be India, Russia, China and many other governments, you better believe they're accumulating this stuff behind the scenes. And I and I think that a similar thing has gone on with XRP. I think that all sorts of banks, financial institutions, and this is just me talking, I think there are all sorts of banks, central banks, um, po powers that be around the world that have been accumulating these things. And I believe when they let it all, when it, when everybody at the party is ready, the people that matter, they're all going to change their stance on a dime. And all of a sudden, all you people out there who have been, well, oh, the price is 31 cents. You're going to all of a sudden, if you had the guts to hang in there, all of a sudden, you're going to realize that all this talk about you manning up and putting big boy pants on um, was for real. And that, that if you had just sat back and relaxed and understood the bigger picture and the way that these people operate and the way that they think that you would have been able to benefit. So I hope that many of you out there do not do not let these the ups and downs of this market um, divert you away from the bigger picture. I've been referring to the bigger picture since I started do, doing YouTube videos. And if you take a step back and you look at the way that the, the manipulative manipulative way that these people think and if you really don't have a good grasp of that I encourage you to go on to YouTube type in Glenn Beck uh, Palm Beach or something to that effect because the guy that runs the Palm Beach newsletter did an entire segment 
and I'll I'll pull it on my on my, I'll show it to you on one of my videos soon to remind you. But this guy literally takes out a chalkboard and shows you diagrams of what the the powerful people, billionaires and banks were doing, how they were buying digital assets while they were going out in public and, and telling everyone it's a Ponzi scheme and all of that. You need to see that so that you understand the game that you're in. Because one fine day when these people finally decide to stop their manipulation, this is exactly what they're going to do. It says, I'm going to read that again. China is going to have an anti-crypto stance for 10 years. And on the 11th year, the People's Bank of China is going to come out and say, oh yeah, we own 15% of all Bitcoin in circulation. And what do you think is going to happen to the price at that point? It's going to go crazy because you're going to all of a sudden know that, that all they've been in on this game all along and wanted to accumulate behind the scenes at cheap prices. What a, what a great racket to have for the governments and these major billionaires and banks around the world to have a media that you're willing accomplice that you can send out to write articles with who, no matter who it is. They'll go out and write articles and they'll go on TV and say whatever the hell you want them to say while you accumulate to manipulate and put the average people like us at a disadvantage in the game. What a great racket that would be to have, huh? Okay, now next, um, I, this is from a PhD, PhDJ does tweets. Um, XRP community, you see we're not the only ones suffering from currency manipulation. And this is a Donald Trump tweet. China dropped the price of their currency to an almost historic low. It's called currency manipulation. Are you listening, Federal Reserve? This is a major violation which will greatly weaken China over time. Um, and then from Chinu Patel, at Chinu Patel 29 sent me this. Yuan's tumble risks currency wars for world central banks. Now, what I want you to do is just as an exercise so that you can see this has been going on since the beginning of digital assets. Go to Google, type in 2013 or 2014 or 15 or 16 and type in Yuan, Y-U-A-N, and type in Bitcoin and you will see that this has been going on, you know, yuan goes down, Bitcoin goes up. This manipulation, all this stuff has been going on for the last six or seven years, folks. Um, anytime that China wants to go in and buy, they're manipulating the yuan. That's, that's what, <laughs> they've been playing this game for a long time. But the important thing to realize is that at some point, at some point in this game, when, when they are full boat and they've got all the stuff, all, all the digital assets they want and know that if they can get that price to go up, that they will, they will be, they can turn on the faucets and start doing what they want to do to make it go the other way. At that point, any of us that are sitting here, I, I believe that if you own even one Bitcoin at that time, that you, you won't be, I, people won't be able to get their hands on one. If you just imagine all the millionaires in the world, <laughs> that all the, the all of the ego the millionaires with egos that are going to tell their financial advisor I want one bitcoin they're going to be told you can't get one and then they're going to move on to the billionaires and the billionaires are going to want one and maybe they'll get to trillionaires at some point okay um let's see here now this is interesting folks I want you to listen up and listen well this guy sent me this this morning I didn't even know who he was but he sent it to me this morning and I'm going to go through this. I want you to, I may not go through the whole thing, but I'm going to at least get it started. But I, I encourage you, he's at guest one X speculative theory. I'm not saying I agree with all this. I'm just telling you it's, it's an angle I haven't heard before. Speculative theory on future XRP price behavior, XRP price step ladder formation. Um, if there are now quite a few, if there are now quite a few institutions running on X rapid, including MoneyGram, that could potentially mean the price is being sustained at a certain range so that the minimal price volatility in three to four seconds is retained. There will be a stage in the near future where the current XRP price range becomes a bottleneck to liquidity to facilitate all the concurrent X rapid transactions because the size of the pipe would simply not be large enough. So that's where the step ladder formation of price would come in, stepping up the XRP price up to the next range where the size of the pipe would then be sufficient for the amount of X-Rapid volume at the time. If we want to, uh, to think of the opposite case, 
where there is no existence of such a price range, then sudden volatilities could be damaging to both institutions transacting in terms of volatile transaction costs as well as the reputation of XRP Ripple. Um, the transactions on the network will likely grow exponentially over time. If we take the red curve as the network transaction growth over, say, two years, then the step ladder function is likely to follow the slope of the red curve. Let's look at this. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming he's saying 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 um, is what that is. Okay, and then he goes on. This gets kind of interesting here. Smaller price increases and longer times between the steps could potentially be observed in the beginning, but as the network transactions exponentially ramp up, the price increase in each step is likely to be higher and the time between each step is likely to be shorter. This step ladder function theory revolves around the equation of exchange and monetary economics. Um, th this shows the relationship between money, supply, income, velocity, the price level, and real output. Um, and then this is where it gets really interesting. In Ripple, Susan Athey valuation model. Now, he's talking about a while back, Susan Athey, who is on Ripple's board, did a valuation model, I believe, with a Stanford graduate or someone, someone else. There was like a couple of PhDs or something. Um, it is illustrated that M MV equals Y, where Y is, is the transaction volume in dollar per period. Therefore, XRP price times XRP quantity can be said to be directly proportional to the XRP transaction volume. And he's showing you a part of her, um, her model there. Uh, therefore, as the XRP transactional volume from MoneyGram, other XRAPID partners, as well as other participants of XRP settlement, um, uh, like Corda Settler, ramps up exponentially, the price of XRP could likely follow the same exponential curve, but in a step ladder formation. This theory could also potentially explain why XRP has been trading in a range for quite a, while, quite a while. It could also explain why the price of some of the other digital assets have been growing, have going up, but seems to have no impact on the price of XRP. I think that, you know, I only just throw this out to you as a theory. There's a lot of smart people in the XRP community like Galgatron and people like that that might, that can come in and weigh, on, weigh in on this and probably... Um, give us some guidance as to what their thoughts are on it. But I, I still, when I see something like this that's so well thought out, I want to at least show you and um, throw it out there and let everybody kind of decide for themselves what they think. XRP Crypto Wolf. Iran's government is close to passing a bill that finalizes regulations for cryptocurrency. Iran's government has introduced a bill that lists the illegal status of cryptocurrencies and authorizes mining as an official industry in the country. Um, and then, XRP Crypto will send me this too. MasterCard is adding senior positions to lead efforts in cryptocurrency, focusing on payments and wallet solutions. They're looking for directors and vice president in blockchain management. MasterCard is recruiting for blockchain engineers and analysts. Interesting. Um, Michael at VAL5 Links. Judge Catherine Polk Fela has told Chase that the extra fees they charged customers who were purchasing cryptocurrency was uncalled for as a crypto as cryptocurrency purchases are not counted as a cash advance. Now this just I, I'm not going to go into this article, but I did want to mention, you know, you could see a lot of these banks getting sued for not allowing cryptocurrency uh, people to buy cryptocurrencies with their credit cards and different things. It'll be interesting to see how some of these pan out. That's just one that went against the bank. Next from uh, Mr. B at XRP Mister live stream 1:30 Eastern time today on faster payments. The links below. I expect Alex Cobb will stream live with commentary. Also, um, he, Alex Cobb, if you, if you aren't subscribed to him, go subscribe to him on um, YouTube. He does live streams usually when there when there is an important um, excuse me when there's an important. Uh, uh, event taking place many times Alex Cobb will do a uh, live stream and he probably will on this if I had to bet um, next NBK crypto at NBK L Y R A D sent me this um, and this is about this faster payment thing we're seeing a lot of this big banks don't want feds real-time payments rails big banks aren't happy with the Federal Reserve's plan to update its payment system that would allow for almost instant transactions 
Currently, the system doesn't operate on weekends and can take days to process certain transactions. All that could change as soon as this week when the Fed is expected to announce changes. The United States is far behind other countries in terms of having real-time payments. In many places, the Fed operates alongside private sector operators, he added. Um, but major U.S. banks, including Citigroup, U.S. Bank Corp. and J.P. Morgan, which have collectively invested about a billion dollars into their own instant payment system, have voiced concerns about the Fed's plans, one issue being that they believe uh, an updated Fed system could result in a delay in the adoption of instant payments. There are also concerns that the Fed might also start offering volume discounts to users in the effort uh, to compete for customers, which would force banks to do the same. What this is really about is that these big banks control this, they control the money right now, and this would make them lose control, and that's what they really have a problem with. Let's just cut to the chase. Um, okay, let me see what I got here. All right, Michelle Vandenberg um, sent me several things. Let me go to this one. Um, this is XR, from XRP Center, at XRP Center, XRP Research Center. Um, Ashish Birla, senior at SVP product at Ripple, confirms that they have their hands full with X-Rapid customers right now. He also explains that the company is exploring the possibility to run an implementation of X-Rapid as an ILP connector. Interesting, interesting. Okay, and uh, he also sent me this. First, uh, Deutsche Bank, then Citibank, now HSBC. HSBC has announced layoffs and their uh, CEO is quitting. HSBC CEO leaving amid 4,000 job cuts. Wow. Um, and then uh, Kieran uh, M. Kel ML Kelly um, had said this, Dear banking CEOs, implement X rapid or face more jobs, cuts, and lower profits, possible losses. Release 10 trillion in pre-funded Nostro Vostro accounts and benefit from savings of up to 70% and on-demand liquidity. Ripple XRP. I like it. Um, Sean Michael, at Michaels underscore Mr. sent me this. SEC Commiss Commissioner Pierce says U.S. is not sitting idle over crypto regulations, but could learn from other countries. You think? I'm not going to go into that article. I think it speaks for, this is kind of the gist of what the SEC has been saying for months. Um, Sergeant Obi Wan sent me two things. I'm not going to go into this one, but I will lead you there. Um, it's from Coin Telegraph. Why is the is the U.S. not yet a leader in crypto regulation? Experts answer. They've got experts from government and from blockchain companies, and they all give their take. Of course, the government-aligned people say, "Oh, what are you talking about?" And then the the blockchain people are like, "Yeah, the government is way behind." <laughs> so anyway. Um, but that's a Coin Telegraph article. You can, there's a lot of quotes if you want to go see it. Then Sergeant Obi Wan sent this: largest stock brokering brokering company of Switzerland allows crypto trading. The Swiss are way ahead in regards to digital assets. Of course they are, because Switzerland and Liechtenstein are ground zero for the world's wealthy. They understand what's happening and what is about to happen. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Switzerland is on this like Donkey Kong. Thank you.